you can trust the Estonians when it comes to delivering upon digitalization. So it actually didn't take one day. It took like literally five minutes for the next email to arrive. And now we can actually do something extremely exciting. We can pay money uh, to receive a PDF. So here's the email which I got. You can uh, click the pay button and then pay. And I'll pause the video because otherwise uh, you'll see random data from me. All right, payment has been performed successfully. Now, uh, thank you, yada yada. And now you click on audit electronic documents. Okay, uh, download the PDF here. And then you have it here. Let me actually open it. Whoops, there you go. Oh man, it worked. I don't have to purchase this a second time. Awesome. Okay, so you get this awesome PDF. I'm sure you're uh, really excited about that. By the way, uh, don't like upload it to the internet because I think it gets watermarked. Yeah, you can see here it's open rank GmbH. So if you share this with people, uh, you might get super screwed because it, it says that you purchased it and shared it with the wrong people. So this is how the standards uh, mafia essentially operates, which we just financed with 48 euros. Now, um, if you haven't seen a standard yet, this is how it looks. And this is actually quite, well, uh, interesting as an exaggeration. But um, you have this table of contents, which is super long because the standard is way too long. Um, by the way, the 62304, when was it last updated? Yeah, in 2006. So that's almost 20 years ago. <laughs> so shows you how, how well the regulatory industry, uh, how, how dysfunctional it is, I guess. All right. Um, and you have all these, uh, all these topics. And each topic kind of like has requirements for you to fulfill. So let's actually look at one example. So uh, I wanted to go to software requirements 5.2. That's page 21. Let's go there. Oh, wait, page 21 is actually not page 21. OK, it's actually page 25. Great. Um, Okay, so for example, one requirement here is like, okay, for each software system of the medical device, the manufacturer shall define and document software system requirements from the system level requirements, class A, B, and C. So um, <laughs> this is very hard to understand for most humans because it's written in a language which targets, I guess, compliance people and not humans. But what it essentially says, okay, you should define something called software system requirements. Um, and this, this is relevant for all classes. So you have different classes of 6234 devices. This is also not, um, re not really related to your medical devices class under the EU MDR. So it might be class 1, 2A, 2B, and so on. But the 6234 classes are different. So they have classes A, B, and C, which is also a, a super broken. And then anyway, um, it goes on to tell you how to write those software requirements. So um, it says, OK, uh, you should define your functional and capability requirements. You should maybe define security requirements, and so on and so on. Now, this sounds very abstract. So let's dive into an example, which makes it very concrete. Um, if you go to our website, to the templates, um, you find the 6304 templates. And maybe taking a quick step back, like, why the hell do we need templates? So. This is a bit like uh, like like a government which wants taxes from you, right? Like if you pay your taxes, you fill out a tax form and send that off to the financial authorities. And that's cool because they provide you with the tax form. Uh, for regulatory compliance, um, the forms are not provided, so you are essentially screwed and you have to usually purchase these for thousands of euros from consultants, which is a terrible experience for everyone except the consultants. <laughs> but... Um, so everyone has to come up with their own documents and templates to, to achieve this. So if the standard, for example, says, hey, you should write something called software requirements, you would be like, so what do I do? Like, do I write a document and title it software requirements? Like, what's the structure? And that's exactly where templates from shady consultants come in. Now, um, or you could actually just use our free templates because we are um, the only consultants which are not shady. Well, that's what I think. So you could go to the... Um, we went to the template section, and then we went to the 6304 section, and then you see a template for a software requirements list. Then you can essentially see uh, this template aims to fulfill the section 521, 522, and 523 of the standard. So if we remember where we were, oh, there's actually this, uh, the, the section we're currently reading. So what you essentially have is like, you need to have a document or well, a template or whatever, 
which kind of like fulfills each section of the standard. So if the standard says, hey, uh, in section 521, you should, uh, we tell you to define software requirements, and in 522, we tell you um, what content those software requirements should actually have, then you need a document which somewhere states, hey, this document is aiming to be compliant with the sections of the standard. And then you go on to actually write these software requirements. So that's generally how you are compliant with things. And uh, how does this look in practice? So, okay, standard says like, okay, functional requirements, security requirements. Well, here in this document, you have this table, which for example, this a functional requirement, in this case for an app, which says, hey, on first launch, show the like introductory screen. Um, and maybe here there's a security requirement, requirement number four uh, for the backend, which says store passwords as hashes, um, which I guess is a security requirement. Um, and that's pretty much it. So that's how you comply with the 6304 or any standard really. Now, as you already noticed, this is an, a super broken approach because here we're creating like a rich text document and adding a crappy table into it. So that's super terrible. Um, so in the next few videos, we'll actually dive into how you can use software tools and especially Formwork, uh, our software tool, to automate a lot of this and create structured data instead. And we'll also dive into why other tools like Jira, for example, might work but might not be the best fit and whether um, they are a good fit for you and which drawbacks they have. Now, um, before I get, before we actually get into the specifics of the 6304, let's actually take this concept one step further and look at the other sections. Uh, not all other sections because otherwise you'll fall asleep. But as you can see, okay, look, um, the 6304, it, uh, this document only fulfills these three sections of the standard. Now, the standard also has other sections. And if you go back to our 6304 uh, templates here, then you actually have something called a mapping table. Yeah. And uh, if we open that, it's this gigantic table which uh, one of us created some time ago and probably we went crazy while doing so. So we essentially went through all sections of the standard. So these are the sections which you also find, well, here, and by the way, also in the table of contents uh, here. And then we mapped, for each section, we mapped one of our templates to that section. So you can, for example, see a template called Software Development and Maintenance Plan that actually seems to fulfill quite a lot of uh, sections of the 6304. So that seems to be kind of an important document. Here you have another document, the SOP, Integrated Software Development, which is also an important one. So that fulfills many other uh, sections of the standard. So that's how that works, because then you essentially go ahead and fill out all these documents, and we'll show you how to do that. Um, and then you kind of like, best case, you show this mapping table to your auditor and go like, hey, look, we went through the entire standard and we're compliant with all sections of the standard. And then your auditor, worst case, will be able to say, yeah, but what about section 522? And then you'll be like, all oh, right, section 522 is handled in the software requirements list. Then you open the software requirements list and you're fine. So that's uh, very exciting. Um, yeah, audits are very exciting. Well, they're actually very boring. All right, uh, so that's how the 6304 works. In the next video, we'll be talking about uh, 6304 classes for a bit, these magical ABC classes. And then we'll dive deeper into how to actually create the documentation and how to automate it. So in the meantime, uh, you can try and read this standard a bit. And once you've fallen asleep and you kind of like gave up on that, you can watch the next video.